Welcome to Concordia Church Online. We're happy you joined us today. If this is the first time you're here, please let us know by texting the word NEW to 619-493-4001. We're beginning a new message series on prayer conversations with God today. If you missed any of the messages on the book of Job, you can find them on our podcast through our website. Also, today is Father's Day, so we want to wish blessings to all you dads out there. We see how you're working hard to provide for, pray for, and bless and guide your family. Enjoy your day. Now, let's worship together. Hi, my name's Richard. I just wanted to take the moment to introduce myself to you in, in case this was the first time that you're joining us online today. Thanks for being here as today we start a series on prayer. And prayer, talking to God, but prayer is conversations. And we're going to have some conversations about that uh, for a while going ahead. Uh, it's a good time in, in the present climate in the world that we live in to kind of get a sense of how, how do we do this thing? And, and how as we do this thing, does it bless not only us, but other people? Thanks for entering into that conversation today. You call. 
freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things you have done great things you have done great So it's the middle of June, and Father's Day is coming up, and for some reason, I just kind of started thinking about my dad. My dad was a great guy. Loved God, loved his family, um, loved his country. I, I remember after the, his funeral, his pastor was telling me that dad was the finest and humblest Christian layman that he ever knew. And I kind of agree with that. But one of the things my dad was not was a conversationalist. Uh, my dad didn't talk a lot ever. Now, as a, as a kid, you ask for stuff, and what I remember is the extent of the conversation when you're asking for stuff was yes, no. And sometimes he varied that a little bit to okay, or uh, I'll think about it. But, and I know we talked more than that, um, especially about stuff like, like sports and uh, stuff like that, but, you know, I don't ever remember Dad's conversations being long. Not, not ever. And I kind of wonder if some people start to get the impression that God's kind of like that too. I mean, I mean, we know that God invites us, even commands us to pray, and, and he promises to hear. And that's really important at times, especially like these, when there's a lot to pray about. Stresses and strains and, and big problems and issues almost everywhere. But, but for many people, and I think for a long time, me included, uh, prayer is kind of like a speech most of the time. Sort of like a one-way conversation where we're talking and talking and talking and talking, but not hearing a lot back. And we're just reeling off our list of requests and asking and asking and asking for things just like God told us to do and crying out uh, in, from our hearts about these big heartache things that are going on and then just kind of waiting to see if we get an answer and not hearing a lot from God in between. Is that what prayer's like? Is that what prayer's like for most people or mostly for you? Or could there be more? Could there be more? Today I want you to start thinking about how you approach prayer and I want you to reflect on this question. What would prayer be like if it were actually a conversation with God? Not a, a one-way speech, but a, but a two-way dialogue. Is that even possible? And if so, what would it look like? And, and if it were possible, what sort of an impact could, could that have on your relationship with God, on the development and maturity of your faith, and on how you live out your faith among other people? To get at that, I want you to start thinking about just kind of your normal, everyday conversations that you have with other people. What, what makes a good conversation? What, what makes a bad conversation? And then how might we apply those same things into our prayer life? What would actually make for a good conversation, a, a good back and forth dialogue with God? 
And I want you to pause for a minute right now, whether you're listening or watching, and think about that. Um, maybe jot some things down. If you're listening or watching with somebody else, talk with them about it a little bit first. What are those things that would make for good conversations with God? Okay, here's a few of my observations about conversations, or at least about good conversations. Uh, good conversations uh, aren't one-sided, all right? There's talking and listening by both people. Another thing I notice about good conversations is that both people, again, are actively engaged with each other. They're, they're looking at each other. They're making eye contact. They're, they're thinking. They're, they're listening. They're asking questions. And they're kind of moving in whatever direction the conversation goes. Now, if prayer is a conversation, could, could there be that sort of give and take and, and back and forth between us and God? I mean, it's not like we see God like sitting next to us here or something. And most of the time, you probably aren't hearing an audible voice either, like one of those God talking to Job through the storm moments. So is it really possible that we could have that sort of conversation with God, not just a, a one-way, but a, but a back and forth, like we're almost sitting there with each other, like we have with each other? I, I wonder. And I wonder if we were able to have that, what sort of form the, the conversation would take. I mean, in real life, we, there's all sorts of different conversations, correct? I mean, just normal everyday discussions about things, about normal everyday stuff. There's conversations that are really about sharing information, conversations about pointing out something that you saw and, and were excited about. Uh, conversations uh, that are sharing feedback, conversations about um, future plans and goals and directions, conversations about strategizing and brainstorming, conversations talking about serious stuff, like your, your worries and your fears and frustrations and stresses, conversations where you're asking for advice, and sometimes conversations that my mom used to call intense discussions. All right, fights, arguments, uh, venting, fuming. Uh, you have all sorts of those conversations with, with people, don't you? Sometimes they're even brutally open, brutally honest. But we can't talk to God like that, can we? I mean, he's God and, and, and we're us. So he's God of the universe and we're really, really small compared to that, aren't there some sort of conversations that you just don't have that are a little inappropriate between someone so small and, and someone so big? Aren't there some things you just don't bring up if you happen to be in a conversation with a really, really, really important person, like a celebrity or something? I wonder.
you know, maybe we need to rethink that whole some things are off limits in the conversation thing, uh, even in our relationship with God. I mean, perhaps God wants his relationship with us to be just as real as the relationships we have with the people around us. I mean, the Bible actually seems to be full of all sorts of interesting conversations like that with God. We find a lot of those in, in the book called Psalms. In the book of Psalms, it's often called not only the hymnal, but the prayer book of the Old Testament. And, and, and you find a whole lot of things in there, honest conversations in there about a whole lot of stuff uh, that you think, well, would anybody, why would anybody talk to God about things like that or in that way? In, in fact, for those of you who kind of like that sort of thing, I got a challenge for you this week. Why don't you get a Bible and go find the, the book of Psalms. There's a lot of them, like 150. Uh, but just kind of page through and skim through and, and, and get a sense of uh, how many different types of conversations with God that you see there. I mean, there's a lot. Way more than just asking for stuff. Way more than just going down this list saying, God, gimme, 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 gimme. Uh, even though God invites that from us, it seems like the Psalms say there's a whole lot more. Now, I want to zero in on one of those types of conversations that I mentioned before, asking for advice. I, I want to zero in there because I don't think we go there too much as far as asking advice from God, and, and it, I think maybe we should. And I think maybe if we learn how to do it, when we ask God for advice on a regular basis, that's one of the things that's really going to take our, our prayers in the, the direction of conversation rather than simply just a speech from us to God. So, so let's talk about that advice. Now, now, one type of advice conversation starts with, you ever heard this one before? If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times or a million times. Right? That's when there's these, usually from a parent to a child, there's these cut and dried things that, look, this is the way it is. I've told you that. Would you get it in your thick skull? And there's some of that in the Bible, too. There's some of these clear cut, black and white, um, no questions about it. This is the will of God. Things like the Ten Commandments. You, you find that and you say, this is, this is just the way it is. This is God's will for you. But sometimes the very clear, practical principles, it's, it's kind of hard for us to find practical, everyday applications to some of that. And, and, and some of that's a little hard to determine sometimes. And that falls into the second sort of advice conversation. Not, hey, if I've told you this once, I've told you a thousand times. It's more of, what do you think? What do you think? That happens in everyday conversations with friends and spouses and coworkers all the time. Right? The what do you think is when you know the right direction and you're just not exactly sure how to get there. Maybe even got a few ideas on how to get there. So what you're doing is asking for advice. You're seeking wisdom. And again, if if prayer is a conversation, that implies that maybe we can and do the same sort of things with, with God. Lord, I, I know what you say, but I'm not quite sure how to apply it here. Show me, um, direct me, guide by paths. There's, here's even some Bible on that. Uh, Psalm 25, uh, verse 4. Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you needs wisdom to know what he should do, you should ask God, and he will give it to you. See, God's telling us right there that he wants to have that sort of conversation with us. That when we know, hey, God says, this is my will, but we're struggling to figure out what's the right way to apply that in this particular situation, and, and, and we're wondering... He's saying, ask me. Ask me about this. Uh, ask for wisdom. I, I, I will show you. Now, now, when people come to you for advice, some, sometimes 
all they really want you to do is what? Kind of, they're already determined to do what they're going to do, and they're just coming to you advice so that you listen to them, and they're going to ignore it and do their own thing anyway. All right, you know people like that, right? You, you got stories like that. That's not what I'm talking about here when, you're, when I'm talking about coming to God for advice. When you come to God for advice, again, you already know the principle. It is in his word, all right, that this is the right thing to do. But now you're entering into this conversation again with God saying, God, what's the best application of that principle in this particular situation? Show me. Lead me. Guide me. Give me wisdom. Help me do the right thing. Now, I want you to think back to everyday normal conversations again. Uh, when you ask for advice that way, and you're actually open to taking it. What, what does that require of you? Uh, what requires that you listen, right? Um, that you say your stuff. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like advice on whatever it is. And then you pause. And you give the other person uh, the opportunity to, to then speak that advice into your life. And, and you underst understand this, that... There are some people out there who are really thoughtful people. And with thoughtful people, sometimes they take some time with that because they've been listening and they've been thinking it through. And then you ask them for advice and then and say, well, what do you think? And then there's this pause, right? And this silence. And sometimes we're really quick to fill that space and then just jump in and start talking some more. Now, now, here's what I've learned over a lifetime of mistakes and impatience. That if I actually want advice from that sort of a thoughtful person, then I need to pause and I need to slow down and I need to be okay with silences in the conversation and I need to actually wait for the other person to respond. And if I do, then usually I hear some pretty good stuff. Well, our, our thesis here is that, that prayer is a conversation, right? Not just a monologue. So I, I think the same things apply. Right? I think as I look at my life, so I think some of the times when I'm screaming about not hearing from God, I think it's probably because I'm not slowing down, because I'm not being quiet enough, because I'm not attentively listening enough so I can hear what God has to say. I right, think of it this way. Know anybody who talks and talks and talks and talks and doesn't ever seem to listen and you, you, you're just waiting for them to take a breath so you can maybe get some words in, the ones that they actually ask you for? I wonder, is maybe God sort of waiting for us to be still? Is he waiting for us to be still so he can speak in a way that we can hear? So here's the challenge. How do we build some of those same listening spaces into our talking with God? How, how do we not only tell God what we think, but, but how do we listen for what he has to stay back? And especially when we're asking for advice. How, how do you do that? How, how might that work for you, building in those listening spaces? Again, I want you to pause for a minute and reflect on that. And again, jot some things down. If you're listening or watching with somebody else, spend a few minutes talking about that. What is prayer? In many ways, prayer is a simple thing to do. But sometimes we can have a limited view of what prayer actually is. Now, don't get me wrong, prayer is a means of supplication and making requests to God. It's just that prayer is also more than that. Prayer is both talking to God and having a relationship with Him. Prayer is making yourself available to God and allowing Him to make Himself available to you. Prayer is a way to ask God for provision for tomorrow and a means by which He provides the sustenance we need for today. So we pray not to get our own way, but rather we pray to align ourselves to God's will. We pray not for things that might create independence from God, but rather we pray as an expression of dependence upon God. Yes, God loves to hear our prayers and requests. He listens to them. He delights in them. 
and he responds to them. It's just that prayer is also where we can confess our sins, praise his goodness, listen to his voice, and be reminded of truth. Prayer isn't just a way to ask for more fruit, but through prayer, we begin to bear more fruit. Prayer isn't just words spoken at specific times during the day. It's living with a mindset that allows God to transform you throughout all of your days. So don't think of prayer as just an activity done before meals or bedtime, but rather think of prayer as a way of life. Well, Pastor, I found that video really interesting, and I liked some of the ways that it talked about prayer and in different ways that I tend to think about it. Yeah, Alex, one of the things that really kind of stuck to me was, I mean, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget this phrase, prayer is making yourself available to God and allowing Him to make Himself available to you. Uh, I'm kind of wondering, what do you think of that? You know, I, I thought that that phrase was really interesting because I tend to think about God making himself available to me. You know, I go to God and I ask him for a whole lot, but I don't spend as much time thinking about how I can make myself available to God. Kind of like you were talking about earlier about listening and making space to listen. Tell me more about that, making yourself available to God. What kind of jog in your brain about that? Well, I, I think when I pray, I tend to either thank God for things or ask God for things. And I spend a whole lot of time doing that and then say amen and we're done. That's it. I, I don't often spend time quietly listening to God or thinking about what he might be trying to say to me. Oh, so that whole conversation thing is hit you in that particular phrase certainly certainly so any other phrases that really kind of struck you in that video yeah i, I wrote one down it was uh prayer isn't just a way to ask for more fruit but through prayer we begin to bear more fruit tell me more about that what what, what stuck out about that to you? Well, they're, they're referring to the fruits of the Spirit, which Paul talks about in Galatians 5. Um, but it, it brings about this idea that through prayer we become healthier Christians. Okay, so you become, you're saying through prayer you become more fruitful. Yeah. Uh, how do you see that kind of playing out? Well, you know, if we, if we think about just our, our normal selves, we do certain things to make ourselves healthier. And, okay. and when we're healthier, nothing bad comes out of that. Usually our lives are better and better for the people around us. There are certain things that we do as Christians that make us healthier Christians, make us more like Jesus. And, you know, prayer is one of them. Through prayer, we become more like Jesus. We become closer with God and we know his will. And through that, we start to be more like Jesus. We start to love and live like him. You know, I'm kind of connecting something with the two things that you said about we become more fruitful through prayer and making yourself available to God. I'm wondering if that's part of a connection there that it's, it's almost like you're saying, if I view prayer as spending time with God and spending time with Jesus, then I start to like imitate him more, be a little more like him. Yeah, yeah, I, I would I would definitely say so. Now, are, are there things, Is we're kind of wrapping up this little discussion, are there any things that you've kind of been thinking about that make you think of prayer in a, like a totally different way than you have before? You know, I, I think the biggest thing that I want to change coming out of this whole discussion that we've had today and, and the video that we just saw in your sermon is, I think I want to spend a little bit more time trying to listen to God either before or after I ask him for things uh, and, and build that into my daily prayer life. And, you know, eventually, after I make intentional efforts, it will, it will become normal for me. And now I guess, Alex, the challenge is, like, how do we do that? So maybe that's the challenge for all of us to figure out. Um, Alex, you get some, gave me some good things to think about and I'm wondering how I'm going to like make those sort of spaces more 
regular and consistent in my life and give God some of that space too. Um, thanks. Thank you. Let's see if I can pull this whole conversation today together a little bit. Here, here's what I'm starting to come around to in this today's conversation about prayer. That prayer at its best, its, its deepest and richest and, and fullest and, and most fulfilling is, isn't a speech. It's a conversation. And it flows out of our relationship. The, the relationship that we have with God. And it becomes a way of life. Not just a few scheduled moments every day, even if they happen to be regular. It's not true. Some conversations are scheduled. In this COVID-19 time, a lot of you have gotten used to scheduling Zoom meetings so that you could connect with people. For a while, I've gotten used to the, the new normal way before COVID being, let me text my kids or text somebody else to see if I can actually call them and talk to them. So, so we do schedule some of that stuff, and you know what? We do that with prayer too. Places like meal times, um, church times, um, getting up in the morning, going to bed at night, uh, some routine times of, of quiet that you tend to build into your life for praying, and, and it's helpful to have those routines. But are all conversations scheduled? Are even most conversations scheduled? Or are they a result of proximity of the moment? Um, you see something and, and you want to talk about it. Uh, you've got a problem at work and you want to go ask a coworker for advice. You um, need something and, and you talk to somebody and, and so on and so forth. And, and so you do. See, most of our conversations, especially with people that we know well, are probably unscheduled. They just kind of happen, but like a text popping in. And, and that's what prayer is too. Okay, prayer is learning to talk to God anywhere, anytime, any place, about anything and everything without having to schedule an appointment. Prayer is that conversation. Prayer is a relationship. Prayer is a way of life. You know, my wife and I, um, we, we take walks uh, together almost every day. Uh, and sometimes on those walks, we don't say a lot. We're just walking together in kind of in the same space, in the same proximity. But because of that proximity, we can start a conversation. One of us will think about something, or we'll see something, or something new will come to mind and we'll just start talking. We'll start a conversation and the other will then join the conversation and then the conversation will take it uh, you know, on one level and then may go off somewhere else and it all started because of the proximity. Back and forth, back and forth, so on and so on. And I want you to think of prayer that way. Prayer is like, sort of like walking around with God during the day. Uh, and if something happens to come up in your mind, you just start a conversation and then because it's a conversation, you actually expect a response from God. Now, thinking about it that way helps me start to understand Bible passages like 1 Thessalonians uh, 5, 17. Never stop praying. Uh, I memorized it way back in a different translation, pray without ceasing. Um, other translations say pray continually. It's all the same thing, just pray all the time. And you read that, and I'm thinking, well, how in the world do you do that? Um, you got other stuff to do. You can't be praying every moment of every day uh, because you got, you got to go to work, um, you have to drive places, you got to produce things. How can you pray continually? Uh, you can't. Unless, unless prayer is a conversation. Unless prayer is a conversation that flows out of the relationship. Unless prayer is a conversation that comes because of your proximity to God. It's not about what you're talking about all the time. It's that you can and, and do talk whenever something comes up. And about whatever comes up. Because it's about the closeness of the relationship. And there's nothing that's off limits. Even though God is way bigger than we are. 
maybe you think about that like um, a dad with his little kids. Some of the things little kids do, I mean, they are not shy about talking about anything, even though dad's way bigger than they are. And they're like, hey, daddy, have you seen this? Oh, wow, that's, that's really cool. Um, dad, daddy, you ought to look and see it, that, what, what's going on. Or, or they love to celebrate with dad. Hey, daddy's home. Let's have fun. Um, little kids are, maybe it's daddy help. Maybe it's as they get older, daddy, what do you think? All right, pray constantly flows out of that kind of relationship. Pray constantly means like Michelle and I do, walking around together. So pray constantly means walking around with God. Be in the same space. All right. And then when something comes up or it comes to mind, you just talk about it. You start the conversation. You're not talking all the time, but the relationship is there all the time. And, and you and God are accessible to each other all the time. Kind of like, you know, you got your cell phone with you if you're like me all the time, anywhere you go, and you're not on it all the time, but boom, you can call somebody or they can call you and the conversation can start up whenever anything happens. Prayer's a little bit like that. Here's Bible on that. Psalm 145, verse 18. The Lord is near to everyone who prays to him. The Lord is near to everyone who prays to him. Near not just to hear, but near to respond. Near to speak. Near not just to listen to what you have to say, but to talk to you. Near to actually have a conversation. Now, it might be a little different to think about prayer that way. But when you start down that path, that prayer is a conversation, not just a speech, I think it takes you to a much deeper and fuller and richer place, not only in your prayer life, but in your relationship with God. Here's a couple things you can try this week to move in that direction. The first is to intentionally build some space for con uh, spontaneous conversations into your routine. Intentionally build some space for a conversation with God to just kind of happen. Here's a couple ways I've done that. One, you know, you, you, it might be just schedule a walk. Take a walk, but take a walk with the intention of noticing something. An intention of noticing something and then talking to God about it. It might be something that you notice in nature. The, the beauty of the sky, the way of birds chirping, um, the, the colors are around you. It might be something else that you, that you notice, um, a need that you observe as, you, as you're walking around. Whatever it is, you're saying, I'm going to take this walk, and when I, when I see something that strikes me, I'm going to talk to God about it. That's how you build those spaces into the conversation. Second uh, place of intentionality might be your, your verse of the day. And again, you read the verse of the day there with an intention of talking about God to God about something that you noticed in the verse. All right, you already know that the Word of God, it's, it's Word of God, so God is talking to you through that verse, that God's actually initiating the conversation there. But, but instead of just reading it for knowledge, Think of it sort of like a, a conversation starter. And, and talk to God about what it makes you think of. Here's an example of what that might look like. Here's the verse of the day from, from today. The, the Lord is my strength and my shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me. My heart is filled with joy. I burst out in song of thanksgiving. Psalm 28, verse 7. Now, instead of just stopping and saying, oh, that's interesting stuff, what if I told God what I was thinking, what it made me think about? God, you're my, God, you're my shield. Well, I got, God, I got a lot going on. There, there's, would you protect me? There's a lot of arrows coming my way. Uh, would you protect me? Would you protect the church? Would you protect the school? Would you protect the staff? Uh, would you protect my friend? Um, God, you're my, my strength. Sometimes I feel so weak. And, and I, I don't know if I can do this. Would you give me your strength? Would you, would you help? Or maybe it's that joy part. God, God, man, I'm just, it seems like life is sucking joy out of us right now. I, I need to feel that joy again. 
Can you show me somewhere? Can you help me find it somewhere? And then pause. It, linger in those spots. Don't just go on to the next thing. Linger. When, when you're talking to God about something, again, linger. Listen for God to see if God has something to say back. And frankly, that's something that I've really had to learn in my relationship with God, to build spaces and silences into the conversation, making it a conversation, not just a speech. Now, that's work, but it's a real blessing. And part of moving that, in that direction, here's, here's how I was able to start moving in that direction. It's learning uh, some of the places that you listen best. For me, it's places like the shower, the hot tub, taking hikes, or when I wake up in the middle of the night. And, and whatever those places are for you, then start your conversations with God there. Start in those sort of spaces. Start praying there, and then, again, be quiet. You start the conversation, and then you give God space to enter the conversation. Um, and if you're still enough, and if you listen closely enough, my guess is you'll hear something. Might be a still small voice. Might be a Bible passage that comes to mind. Might be a spirit sense. Kind of the, you know, go this way, do this thing. Might be a totally unspoken heart level feeling. Kind of like when a little kid is scared and, and, and mom or dad comes and says, don't worry about it. it. It'll be okay. You're, you're safe. Kind of that peace that passes understanding that the Bible talks about. Those are all some of the ways that God joins the conversation. If we give him the space. And if we build some of those silences in pauses into the conversations in our lives. It's not just a monologue, us saying stuff to God, but we're also giving God space to, to, to speak back to us. And that takes not just our prayers, but our relationship with God to a whole nother level. Try it. shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable we'll 
shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. We're glad you joined us today for Church Online. If you're here for the first time, we'd love to welcome you. Please send a text with the word NEW to this number, 619-493-4001. We'd also love to pray with you. Please send a text with the word PRAYER to the same number, 619-493-4001, and you'll get a link where you can write your prayer need and we'll get right on it.